After shoveling my driveway for three years, I caved, I gave up the shovel, and I bought a snowblower this winter. Now I bought it halfway through the year, and I've only had to use it once. So I'm taking a little credit for the normal spring that we're having today. But what this means is I finally have a piece of equipment that I own and I determine when the key starts the machine and when it turns off the machine. I'm thinking back to corn planting last year, we got in a lot of situations where we're trying to determine should we keep planting, it's getting late, we don't know if we're gonna get in, should I push the conditions or not? And I'm almost certain we're gonna find those same situations this year. And there's some things I think through of how do we make the right decision not knowing what the future outlook holds on our planting conditions. Now when you're deciding whether that tractor key should be on or should be off, there's a checklist that I like to follow. The first thing when you're deciding on putting that corn in the ground or not is do I have a suitable seed bed first and foremost and that's really a moisture conversation. The second thing is what's the soil temperature today and what's the forecast for the future and the last one is am I using practices that promote early season growth and development things like starter fertilizer if you got questions on starter, check out John Zook's Why Starter video. But these are the three things that I need to have in place that are table stakes to plant in corn early. Okay, so let's assume that you're going to keep the planter tractor key on during less than ideal conditions. The next decision you have to make is which hybrid should go in the ground first. Now, of course, we want to stick to our plan and putting the right hybrid on the right acre. But if you consult any kind of seed guide, Information can be found in there of hybrid emergence and vigor scores. Best case scenario, plant a strong emerging product first and wait for the slower emerging products. Make sure you have the highest chance of establishing normal stands under tough conditions. The other thing I look at is hybrid response to population. Now, if you're willing to push conditions and you're willing to maybe sacrifice some stand to get it planted early, worst case scenario is we plant a product that's really fixed that might be shown through a high response population score. For example, this high response population hybrid last year planted at 30,000 versus 38,000. You can see that we didn't have a lot of flexing ability to compensate for the loss of stand versus a low response to population product that indicates a higher chance of flexing ability. And as you can see, this low response population product at 38,000 versus 30,000 last year, it helped flex and overcome that loss of stand. So making sure we use a strong emerging product coupled with a lower response population score would be the best if you decide you're gonna push conditions just a little bit. Also, keep in mind that every bag of cropland corn comes standard seed treatment with zinc. Now, it's not supposed to replace the zinc that's in your starter, but it's there to make sure every corn kernel gets a shot of zinc in the imbibition process. Our data shows a positive yield response because we know that zinc is so crucial in the early germination and growth and development of that corn plant. 